Okay, so let's talk about the different kinds of information that you find on a survey map. So let's just come up with a list. Okay, so somebody give me, this is create a list. Okay, so what kind of information do we find on survey maps, boundary survey maps? Boundary set lines. Okay, so we have information on, yeah, so I'm going to put monument, monuments. I'm just going to put monuments. Okay, so Elena said, is it founder set? Good job, Elena. Okay, what else do we know about monuments on a map? What else can we learn about monuments on a map? Oh, uh, when did they use it? Yeah, good. When was it set? Hey, what else? Where they are. Okay, location. Yeah, location. Good. Location of the monument. Yep. Okay. How do you know if you found the right monument? If you're in the field. Look for the tag number. Ah! Okay, he said tag number, but I'm going to give you a broad. I want you to think a little broader. Okay, I'm going to call it type or character. Is it a rebar? Is it a pipe? Is it a plastic cap? Is it a brass tag? Is there a stamp number on it? Yeah, you guys are doing awesome. Good, that's a great list. Okay, so we can get all that information. So, look, if you're going to be a surveyor, you got to be able to read a survey map and get this kind of information off of the map, right? Okay? Okay, what else? What other information do we have on survey maps? I'm assuming that. That was a good start. Don't feel bad if you don't have an idea, but I'm just giving you guys an opportunity to exercise your brains. I know it's Friday afternoon and you just ate pizza. So you're probably trying to fall asleep. So like the, the line data, so bearing this. Yeah, way. good. Yeah, so what I'm going to call that, Austin, I'm going to make it a little broader, but I'm going to call it measurements. Absolutely. That's a super important piece of information that's on the map, right? Okay, so we have measurements of direction, okay, which is the bearing, okay? We have measurements of distance, which is the length, okay? What's another kind of measured value that we have on a, on a survey besides the bearing and distance? Area, right? So we've got bearing, okay? And I'm gonna put in parentheses direction or angle. Okay, because two bearings give us the angle. Okay, we have distance. And we have an area. Excellent, good job, guys. Perfect. Okay? Okay, so I'm gonna, you guys are doing good. I'm gonna help you out here with, with another, with another one. There's some things that you guys, I know you, I know you have it in your head, you're just not thinking about it. Okay, what about... Information on other land records. Do we ever see that? Yeah, so what might be on a survey? What might be shown on a survey about land records, other land records? Where they can be found? Yeah, so we might see, sometimes if you're doing a survey... So let me give you an example. If you see this note over here, What does this note mean, Elena? Um, it means that's the book and... Book and page of a record survey yes. on this next parcel next door. Yeah. That's information shown on this map. Now that's important because if we're surveying this parcel, what do we need to do? You need to know what's going on over there. Yeah, we need to go get that, right? Okay, so we have information about land records. Okay, so that could be other maps, right? that we need to go look at, okay? You guys ever see something like this on a survey? OR 252-1164, what is that? Official records. Yeah, official records, good, you're on a roll. Okay, what kind of document is that usually? It's not a map, it's a what? It's a deed. So we get references to other maps, we get references to deeds, okay? Yeah, that's really important. Okay, so those are the two main types of information that we get. Okay, so one of the things I teach you guys is when we go pull maps, we're doing a boundary survey, we go to the county surveyor's index and we get the maps, but that's not good enough. Then we gotta look at each map because there might be references on those maps that aren't on the county surveyor's index. That doesn't happen all the time, 
but it happens every once in a while. So that's a good part. That's part of doing good boundary research is you got to look. You guys ought to be able to, ought to be able to hand you a map. In fact, we're going to do it today. I'm going to hand you a map and I'm going to say, you tell me what are the other land records that are referenced on this map. You guys should be able to answer that question, right? Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple more. These are hard, a little bit harder. Okay, but we have information about corners. Okay. And so let me give you an example. Okay, does everybody understand the difference between a corner and a monument? Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. So a monument is a physical mark. It's a physical object that claims to mark the location of a property corner. Okay, a property corner is an angle point in a boundary. Okay, so let me give you some logical rules here. Does a property corner have does a property corner have to have a monument? No. No, we have all kinds of property corners in the world that aren't marked by monuments. In fact, that's more often that they're not marked than that they're marked. Because surveys are expensive. So you can have a property corner without a monument. Okay? You can have a monument without a property corner. So for example, a control point, Angelo does this all the time. He sets a monument to mark a control point. Is that a property corner? No, it's a control point. It's still marked by a physical object. It's a monument. Okay? So when we find a monument, one of the things we have to ask is, does this mark a property corner or not? And by not, it might mark something else. Okay? Okay, here's the other tricky thing. Can you have more than one monument that claims to mark a property corner? Elena's like, whoa, mind blown. Yeah, let me give you an example. We call this a pink cushion. So we go out to find a property corner. Angelo, I think Angelo was with me. We had this exact situation come up on a job we did in Merced. And I walk over to where the fence corner's at. I'm looking for the property corner. And I find two pipes, two iron pipes. This is literally drawn to scale. This is literally how far apart these two pipes were. Okay, so I don't know, what is that, four inches? Okay, so two surveyors disagreed on exactly where this corner was. So each guy set a pipe. Okay, now, how many corners do we have? Well, hold on, how many monuments do we have? Two. How many corners is there? One. Two monuments purport to mark the same corner. That happens a lot. Okay, it should never happen. Surveyors should be shot for this. Okay, because like, look, can we measure that good? Probably not, right? Like, this, the second guy should have held the first guy's pipe. Okay, but surveyors are dumb. They fall in love with math, and they, and they turn their brains off, and then they do stuff like this. Okay, but the reason I'm giving you this illustration is I want you to understand you, you can have more than one monument that claims to mark a corner. So, the rule is corners do not equal, sorry, do not equal, uh, I'm just messing that all up. <laughs> I can't remember. We do the same thing. I can't remember from uh, algebra class. Does not equal monument. They are not the same thing. Now, sometimes you'll hear me slip up and I'll say corner when I mean monument. I try really hard not to do that though because I don't want to confuse you guys. Okay, so there's also information about corners. So we talked about monuments. There's also information about corners on survey maps. By the way, we forgot one very important thing over here that's on survey maps. Okay, and that is, is that monument found or SFN? Isn't that important? Yeah, we want to know that. Look, if I'm out looking for a monument and the last three guys said they didn't find it, what does that probably mean? I'm probably not going to find it. Now, that doesn't mean I don't look, but I'm going to now. If there was a guy there a year ago and he said he found it, and, and I don't find it, what does that mean? I need to look again, because it's probably still there, right? So that's important information. Okay, but let's talk about corners for a minute. Okay, so look, down here, this is the actual map that we're looking at. Okay? So when you see this on a map, usually... Everybody agrees with me that's a corner. 
It's an angle point and a, and a boundary. Okay, but usually when you see it like this, is there a monument? No. Now usually we get something that looks like this if there's a monument, right? So here we have a corner, but no monument. Okay, so let's think about what information we can figure out from the map on this corner. Okay, so do we know, based on this map, do we know if that corner is marked or not, based on this map? Is there, is there a monument symbol there? So if I had to guess, is that marked by a monument, yes or no? It's probably not marked. So here's one of the things we can learn about a corner from a map. Is it marked? That's one of the most important things that I look at when I'm, when I'm doing a proposal for a boundary survey, right? Because if the client if the client's corners don't have a monument, is that more work or less work for me? Less. Angelo says less because he's the guy that digs the holes, but you got to think broader. If I can't find the client's monuments, then what do I have to do? If I'm trying to survey the lands of heart and he doesn't have any monuments set, in order to figure out where these corners are, now what do I got to go survey? I got to go survey the guys next door. And if I don't find those monuments, then what do I got to do? I got to go farther out. Okay? So, isn't it funny how your perspective changes the answer to the question? This is the guy that dig holes. He's saying if there's no monument, I have to dig a hole. You're right. Okay, but it's very important. If the client's corners aren't marked, that, that, that's more work for us. Here's the other thing that happens. If the corners aren't marked and they've never been marked, how do people know where to build the fences? Okay, so chances are if the corners aren't marked, there's a high likelihood of what we call encroachments. That means people have built stuff over the property line. Okay, so this is a really important thing that we learned from a survey map. Okay, so let's just look at the map as a general rule. What do we know about this corner? It was. It's marked by a monument this guy found or said. Um. General rule, if it's solid, it's found. Not always, but this is kind of, that's kind of the typical condition. Okay, so he found 501. What do we know about 502? He, said. he found 502. What do we know about 1503? He said it on his survey, hollow circle. 1504. He what about this corner? What do we know about that? We don't know. We don't know. Probably not marked by a monument. He didn't show a monument here, right? Okay, as a general rule, if he doesn't, if a surveyor doesn't show the monument, that means she didn't find a monument there in the record or on the ground, okay, as a general rule, okay. Now, there's some other things we can learn about corners from a map, okay. So, let me give you another example. Let's just say, okay, we're going to, I'm going to call this 1505, okay. So, here's what we can learn from this map about this corner down here, okay. We know there's a relationship between 1505 and 1504, don't we? Okay. So does everybody understand? Is let me draw let me draw another corner up here. Okay, I'm going to call this one 1506. Okay. Does everybody understand that 1504 and 1505 are connected to each other? They're connected to each other by a boundary line, right? Okay. So 1505 is connected to 1504. Is 1506 connected to 1504? No. No. So that's another thing we learned. We learned about what are the connections between corners. Okay, that's important. Those connections become important. Okay, so we could say, hey, 1505 is connected to 1504. Okay. It's south of 1504. It's not marked by a monument. And we also know something else about this relationship between 1505 and 1504. What else do we know about that relationship? Distance. We know the varying distance between those two connected corners. How important is that? Pretty important, right? So there's all kinds of information about corners. So is it marked? Is there a connection to adjacent corners? What's the relationship between one corner to another, right? What's the varying distance between those two corners? Okay, so that's all information we learned you guys understand this is information about corners, not about monuments? There's a separate set of information about monuments, right? Okay? All right.
Okay, so there's one other group of information that is on a survey map. Then we're going to print a map and we're going to do, I'm going to pick the brains a little bit before I let you go home. Okay, so there's also what I call metadata. Does anybody know what data is? Metadata is? Metadata is data about data. Okay, so it's information about data. So on every map, every survey map, there's some information on the map about the map itself that's very important. So let's think about it. What does the map tell us about itself, usually? How it was calculated or how it was measured. Okay, so how measurements were made, it might tell us that, yep. There's even some more simple, that's a good answer, Elena, but there's even some more simple stuff. How measurements were made, okay. How about this? Who did the survey? Does it tell us that? Yeah, usually. That's data about the survey, metadata, right? Who did the survey? Okay, what else do we know? Somebody said it already a few minutes ago, Angelo, I think. What else do we know about the survey besides how it was, how the measurements were done and who did the survey? By the way, Elena, I wish more surveyors told us that on the map. They rarely do, but it's a good habit. Okay, so what else do we know? What, what else is on the face of the map about the map itself? The date of the map? When it was surveyed, yeah. Is that important? Yeah, that's important. When was it surveyed? We need to know that, right? If it was surveyed 100 years ago, and I find a monument five feet from where it's supposed to be, am I going to be surprised? No, it was done 100 years ago, right? Like, they were still getting shot at by Native Americans 100 years ago, right? Okay, if we did, the, if the map was done last year, and I find the monument five feet from where the corner's supposed to be, am I, am I worried about that? Yes. Yeah, because in 2021, we ought to be able to get closer than five feet. That means somebody's making a mistake, either me or the guy that did the map. We gotta look at that, right? This is really important information. When was it surveyed? Who did the survey? Do you guys realize that surveyors get a reputation? If I'm working in the Central Valley and you hand me some guy's map, I can tell you usually just by looking at the guy's name how good the survey is and if I'll find his corners. And there's some guys you hand me the map, like a widow's map. Widows was an old guy that surveyed the whole freaking, he surveyed He's like my hero. He surveyed everything, right? And he was actually an engineer, which is hard to believe. But you hand me a widow's map. If widow said he set a pipe, I'm going to find that pipe where he said. Because I just have learned from following him, survey after survey after survey. That guy did what he said. There's other guys, as soon as I see their name, I'm like, oh my God. This is, and there's nothing going to be on the ground like this guy said. Because they just do half big surveys, right? So this is important. Who did it? I, don't, I want to know that. That's going to tell me what I might find on the ground, right? Okay? How the measurements were done, that's really important, okay? Here's another thing that it tells us on the map. Not always, Elena. This is another, it should be on there, but it, but it isn't on. Sometimes they tell you what was the purpose of the survey. Do we want to know that? Yeah, it's helpful to know that. Were they building a road? Were they putting up a fence? Were they doing a subdivision? Be good to know that, right? That's why you should always read the notes on your survey, okay? Because you can understand what the purpose was, okay? So there you go, five types of information you can get off the survey now. okay? So you guys ready to try this out? And then uh, after that, I'll...